Somebody asked me if I was going to entertain you. I said, I'm not a very good singer, so <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Uh, thank you for coming, uh, and thank you for inviting me to talk. Uh, I really do appreciate the Gulf Restoration Network. They have some very good people here. In fact, uh, John Henderson, when, when the CPRA met in August in uh, Dulac, uh, which was an orchestrated event where they beat up on, on us, uh, John Henderson got up and, and made some uh, public comments. And uh, Billy Nungesser was sitting next to me, and he leaned over and said, John, that was really good. Did you write it? <laughs> I said, no, but I wish I had. Uh, so you, you clearly have some, some people with some talent here, and, and I congratulate you on your successors. Uh, I didn't really prepare anything uh, because I, I think this audience has a very good idea of what's going on. I do want to mention that on September 25th, Wednesday night, at 6.30 at the Basin Street Forum, uh, Basin Street Station, there will be a uh, forum on the lawsuit uh, the Independent Women's Organization and the East New Orleans Neighborhood Advisory Commission have invited a representative of the governor and a representative of uh, our authority. I'll, I'll be there. Uh, John Lopez of Lake Pontchartrain Foundation will make a uh, presentation, a brief presentation beforehand. Uh, and we don't have a confirmation, but we hope uh, that Garrett Graves will, will show up to represent the, uh, the state. And there'll be plenty of time to ask questions and get into their position. <clears throat> Interestingly, on that uh, post-Katrina, when the congressional delegation asked me to chair a working group on flood protection, uh, Gary Graves staffed that uh, committee. So I used to oversee him, I guess. I wish he'd remember that. Or may <laughs> maybe he does. Maybe that's the problem. Uh, as you know, we, we have filed a lawsuit. The reason is the legal justification, really, too. Uh, we're responsible, obviously, for the levy system, among other things. And the failure to do what the, they said they were going to do in terms of minimizing damage when they dredged 10,000 miles of canals through the state's marsh uh, has increased the storm surge, which comes against the flood protection system in New Orleans. So we would like them to abate the problem, whether that means doing what they originally said they were going to do and fix the problem, or whether uh, it means if it's open water and can't be fixed, then they should uh, compensate us so that we can improve the flood protection system to protect your lives and property. And uh, there's another legal argument as well, which exists only in Louisiana, uh, civil law tradition, uh, which goes back to the Romans. There's something called the servitude of drain, which prohibits one neighbor from sending more water against another neighbor. And in the case where some of, most of the operations were conducted under permits, but not all of them, uh, but servitude of drain would apply to everyone. If there is less marsh, less of a buffer zone, no more cypress trees, then that storm surge coming against the levees is increased. So that's the legal uh, basis upon which we're making our claims. We think they're very strong in court, uh, the, if we ever get to court. The problem we have, of course, is political. It's not legal. And uh, Garrett has said he's 1,000% uh, certain that next year the legislature is going to intervene. Because even if they do replace me, and I ran into the governor a couple of days ago on a plane. I've known him since. Actually, I met him probably at the uh, uh, Don and Nancy Adams over there at a Brown University alumni event before he ever ran for office. So I've known him a long time. And when he was in Congress, we actually had a, uh, a fairly long heart-to-heart -heart talk after Katrina. 
So I ran into him on a plane. I said, you're firing me. <laughs> he said, yeah, but not for your day job. Uh, so I will probably be replaced, but we will still have the votes to continue the lawsuit. Replacing me and uh, Tim Duty and uh, Dave Barnes is not going to end the lawsuit. We still have the votes to sustain it. So the fight is going to go. The fight will continue into the legislative session. Uh, Garrett has said he's 1,000% certain the legislature will do something to interfere with the lawsuit. I'm old enough to remember when somebody else, the last time in politics I heard someone was 1,000% certain. And that was when George McGovern said he was 1,000% behind Thomas Eagleton about 48 hours before Thomas Eagleton was replaced. <laughs> it's a long, long way between now and when the legislature convenes in March. And we definitely believe that the public is behind the lawsuit. All you have to do is listen to Garrett talk. You don't happen, have to listen to me talk. Uh, or <laughs> Garrett has said publicly, I'm the first one to admit that there's liability there for, for, for the industry. OK. <laughs> Statewide. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, a study in which industry scientists participated, the estimate was that 36% of all the land loss was a result of the activity of the oil and gas industry. There are plenty of other studies that put the number higher. There are a few that put it lower. Okay, so they've got liability. One question he has never answered is what does the industry do that is so valuable for the state that the state is willing to look the other way and not even attempt to collect tens of billions of dollars, which Garrett Graves says they're liable for? All I wanted to do is answer that question. And you know, this was no stealth lawsuit. As you probably know, we first met with him last December, early December. He came to our executive session in January. We, on multiple occasions in the next months, reminded him, you know, we intended to proceed. And yet he says he was blindsided, and didn't know about the lawsuit until 48 hours before we filed. Really must have been wearing blinders and had some very powerful earplugs. I live in the French Quarter and I would love to get those earplugs. <laughs> uh, what else can I tell you about the lawsuit? Um, the current concern that we have, the most immediate concern in the nominating committee, I don't know if you know how the process works. Uh, after Katrina, 53,000 people signed a petition. I'm sure some of those, some of you in the room signed a petition demanding a special session of the legislature, which we got. Subsequently, there was a constitutional amendment, got 81% of the vote statewide, 94% of the vote in Orleans Parish, those few people who were back in time to vote for that. And it created not only us, but a process. And that process includes a nominating committee the nominating committee is made up of representative, the deans of all the colleges of engineering in the state, even Tulane's dean, although they did away with their engineering school. I like him, Nick Altero, so I shouldn't have, and plus, you know, I'm long associated with Tulane. Incidentally, I forgot to mention I was a coach on the team that beat LSU 14 nothing in one month. Football players is here. <laughs> Billy Kramer. Uh, you can see how organized this talk is. Okay, so this nominating committee, including engineering school deans, representatives of good government groups, other engineering and scientific organizations in the state, picks nominees, advances the nominees to the governor, 
And the law says the governor shall pick one of the nominees advanced. However, they have to act within 90 days after a vacancy. If they do not act within 90 days after a vacancy, then the governor shall, has to, pick someone to fill the vacancy. Now, Garrett Graves control, they have to, it's a long process involving public notice, advertising, and so forth. Garrett Graves can control that process. And he ran the ads late as a statement of fact, whether by accident or design, you can make your own decisions. So late that the committee only has September 29th and September 30th to decide what nominees to advance to the governor. If they don't do it by midnight September 30th, then the governor can pick whomever he wants. And the committee right now has done something that I find very strange. They are, re they are saying they want the governor to give them permission to delay their proceedings, give them another couple of weeks. Now, if they do not act, there's no provision in the law that allows for an extension of time. If they do not act by September 30th, whatever the governor says, whether he agrees to a delay or not, it will be at his discretion. So this reform entity that was created to take politics out of the process as much as possible, which has the power to put forward nominees and the governor shall pick one of those nominees. If they wait after September 30th, which is their current plan, then they give 100% of the power to the governor to pick whomever he wants. I find that very distressing. I find that, I don't want to use the words that are as strong as I feel about what it does to the reform movement, to the 53,000 people who signed a petition, to the 81% to the of the statewide vote, 94% of the Orleans Parish vote. If they turn around and give the governor 100% of the control, when their reason for existence is to take control themselves, this troubles me. And it has nothing to do with the lawsuit. And it has nothing to do with whether or not I'm renominated. It's a deeper question about whether an entity that was created as a reformer to remove politics suddenly bends its knee and yields to politics. And uh, I will say that. Uh, a long time ago, I heard somebody talk, and he made one observation. I will leave you with this, and then I'll be here to answer questions and, until they carry me off the stage with the hook. Uh, politics is not a spectator sport. You know, there's no one in this room right now who is capable of going out on a Superdome six or seven hours ago in competing with the people who were on the field. I was a coach, I probably, you know, and you know, Billy Kramer over there who was a very fine football player, and maybe in our day he could have played and I could have coached, but we couldn't get out there today. Football's a spectator sport, except for the very few athletes on the field. Politics is not a spectator sport. You can create the result that you want. It's up to you. I mean, I'm an historian, and I can tell you, both from my study and from my personal experience, I was a journalist in Washington covering politics for 10 years. My wife worked for the Senate for 20 years. People, history does not happen. People make history. So what happens here just as 
Citizens for One Greater New Orleans got out there and created our entity. You know, what happens in the next week and in the future is really up to the citizens of New Orleans. So uh, thank you, and I'll, as I say, take any questions. Okay, we filed in civil uh, court. Uh, the defense removed it to federal court. We have arguments uh, that are to remand it back to civil district court. The reality is there is a lot of conversation among the lawyers which court was going to be best. We think it'll probably go back to civil court, but that is not a disaster if it doesn't. There are a lot of advantages to being in federal court. The, uh, the, uh, the, 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 so the servitude of drain applies, that applies in either place.